wind to blow. He's allowing the, ri- the lions to roar. Amen. To strengthen your faith because there's a place of deposit for you. There's a place of deposit for you. There's a place where you're going to have to deposit your faith. Abraham was going somewhere. God needed Abraham to do something that not a natural man would be able to do. God's got, God, need, God is, is building you up for a supernatural move. Somebody say amen. Amen. God's building you up so that you can, so that he can do a great thing in your life. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. I received that, Lord. I received that in the name of Jesus. Praise God. Amen. He's building you up. That's what's going on. The devil's trying to make you think that you've been forgotten and he's trying to make you think he's in control, but he's not in control. Praise God. All power in heaven and earth has been given unto our Lord. Amen. Somebody say amen. Praise God. So we did talk about, amen, the altars that Abraham was being led to each time. Praise God. He was running into God made him a promise. He made he makes him a promise as he makes him a promise. Praise God. Abraham now begins to pursue the promise. The promise always has a problem. <laughs> the promise always has a problem. Because it's what God is building you into. And for us, this journey of faith, God is making us into sons. God is making us into sons. Somebody say amen does not yet appear what you shall be, but when he appears, you shall be just like him. Amen. And I'm talking about sonship wise, where you don't doubt, you don't even question what God is telling you. And you know the voice of your father. You know the voice of your father. You know the voice of your father. Somebody say amen. If my son was here right now and I heard his voice, I would know him. Amen. I would know his voice immediately. If if he heard my voice, he would know it. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And my daughters, if they heard my voice, they would know it. God says, my sheep, my sheep, my sheep, my sheep, my sheep. They know my voice and another they will not follow. Amen. It's going to come. It's going to come a time when you are so you, 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 you. You, you, you are so clear and distinct on hearing the voice of God and not doubting because we're, we're, in a, we're in or coming to a very critical time when you've got to know the voice of God, praise God. Amen. I gave you an example of how Brother Hart was talking about they were standing under some ice and the ice was about to fall, but they had no way to know it. Thousands of pounds of ice they were standing on, and he just felt heard in his spirit to run. So he didn't, he didn't ask why. He just ran. Somebody say amen. And the other man that was with him ran too. You're going to save somebody's life. Do you hear me? You're going to save somebody's life. They don't know why they're moving. They don't know why they're running. They don't know why they're shifting. They don't know why they're praying. They don't know why they're praising. But they're just going to follow suit with you. God's putting you in such a place. Sometimes faith, you don't have to understand faith. Sometimes you just have to move in faith. We can ask questions later. Amen. Wait till you get to heaven and ask the Lord. Praise God. You ain't got to understand, know everything right now. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. And God's building you up, praise God, where you can be the one to move. You can be the one to pray. You can be the one to, to praise God in the middle of, of nowhere. You ever just had an unction just to praise God right, right where you was and, and you didn't know what was going on? You ever had tongues just to come up out of you, praise God, and, and, and you don't know why, but all of a sudden you you just praying in tongues. One night I rolled out of the bed and I, I, heard, I heard tongues going and I didn't know where they was coming from. Turn around, they was coming from me, but I couldn't stop it. So I just rolled out of the bed and continued. And then when I got back in the bed, I was going like, well, Lord, what was that about? Well, later on that day in a near miss accident, praise God, with a transfer truck that was carrying gas, God said, that's what that was about. He was training me then for reigning. 
He was training me then for a time of reigning. There's going to be a time when you've got to reign in certain situations. You've got to take the lead. You ain't looking around for no man. You ain't looking around for no woman. You ain't waiting to see what nobody else do. You ever had somebody in a, in a situation come up and say, you know, uh, 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 the, 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 the person that I know, I, I, you know, that, that, that has this different thing that's going on, come forward. Then people be sitting there going like, they waiting on somebody else to move. You ever been sitting in a salvation situation like that? They call and you know you ain't saved. Amen. And you know you need to be up there, but you waiting on somebody else to move. Have you ever missed that altar call? I have. I have. Thank God for his grace and his mercy. Amen. But I've sit there through altar calls. No, I'm supposed to be up there. And didn't move simply because I was waiting on somebody else to move first. But it's going to come a time when you don't need to know. You don't need to see nobody else move. You're going to be so sure of God. Sons are sure of their fathers. Sons are sure of their fathers. You have spent so much time with him in prayer. You spent so much time with him in praise. You spent so much time with him in worship. You spent so much time around God's people until you know his voice. Somebody say amen. And so God is, is, is training you to hear his voice. God is training you to be the son that he is calling, praise God, that he can use anywhere. There was, a, there was a guy that was saying he didn't know why. He, he was up there arguing with God. He was saying, God, he said, why you got this spooky woman up here praying? It was Catherine Cooper. She's up there just, just praying. And you know how she kind of, if you ever watched her ministry, she'd be talking to the Holy Ghost and just moving around. Woo! You know, and, and, and it just, it looked different. And this guy was sitting there and said, man, I know the word. He said, I've been preaching for so and so. And, and, and you, 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 you always use her. You always use her. And God told him, say, hey, there's a couple right next to you. Say, they about to, they about to get a divorce and they about to go to hell. They about to miss me. He said, I want you to talk to them and tell them. And he looked over at the people. He said, they don't know me. Just like that. So he kept on talking to God about Catherine Kuma. And so the whole service, he's just arguing with God about Catherine Kuma. Catherine Kuma walks over to, she's in the middle of preaching. She walks over to the edge of the, of the stage and looks at the, the, the couple and points to them and begins to tell them everything God told her to tell her. And then God told the guy, I said, that's why I use her. Because she'll do what I ask her to do. God's looking for sons. He's looking for sons. And the word of God says, and the father seeketh such. He's looking for sons. And so he's exercising you in your sonship. The ability to discern, the ability to hear, the ability to know what's God and what's not of God. And he's He's got strong people around you, but let me tell you something, praise God, amen. When Ishmael got sick, we, was, we had moved down over there on Hope Street, and Ishmael had been my mentor all the way in Birmingham. When he got sick, I just knew he wasn't going to die. Ishmael not going to die. The Lord's going to raise him up. Ishmael not going to die. The Lord's going to raise him up. I was needing Ishmael, because Ishmael, I go, is that God? Ishmael said, yeah, that's God. And we, we go, we go do. Well, Ishmael passed. Somebody say amen. amen. Do you know God will move people out of the way so you can become who he's called you to be? Amen. And I'm not talking life, death all the time. Sometimes they move. Sometimes they quit communicating with you and you be mad at them. But God is training you. God's a jealous God. He said, I should have no other God before me. He won't let people be your God. He'll give you someone you can lean on for a while, but after a while, the training wheels will go out the way. Mama said, you're going to ride that bike. <laughs> One Christmas, she said, you're going to ride. She bought us some 24-inch bikes. And, and, and we had to get on them. You know, you had to tiptoe to hold them up. And we'd get on them and we'd ride them. We had them training wheels on, training wheels on, training wheels on. One day she came out and she had the little old wrench. Daddy was driving trucks. 
Mama came in. She was being daddy right there. She took them training wheels and she, she, she lift them up high. You know what I'm saying? Where they wasn't touching and bent them up. So it's, it's no way for them to touch. And he said, she said, now you got to ride that bike. She said, I ain't paying all that money for you to ride around here on no training wheels. So she pushed us down the, down the road. We fell. <laughs> Bang. We fall. We start crying. She said, but get up. You better get up. So you're going to ride this bike today. She pushed it down the road, praise God. We got to where we could wobble all down. Then she took the things off. But we rode that day. Somebody say amen. The eagle flies and flutters, praise God, but she'll tear that nest up because those eaglets are meant to fly. I don't know who you're depending on or what you're depending on, but God wants you to hear him for yourself. Hear the voice of God for yourself. Amen. We, uh, 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 people are not, people should not be wanting to hinder you by keeping you tied to them. Somebody say amen. 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 But he wants you to learn to hear God for yourself. Somebody say amen. Amen. Abraham's on a journey. We've, took him, we've taken him through, uh, the first altar was praise. God gave him a, a promise, and Abraham built an altar, and he went and praised God. Somebody say amen. amen. And then he took him to, a, he, he, he brought him to a place when he gave him the promise. He, he brings him over there, and then he tells him uh, that he's going to give him this land. But when Abraham gets there, he finds that the land is full of Canaanites. Problem. Somebody say problem. Then he calls Abraham to he took him to the altar, and Abraham builds this one, and it says he began to call on God. That was his altar of what? Prayer. So we understand things that are going on at the altar. What are they? Praise and prayer. We understand that right now. Somebody say amen. amen. Down here in... Uh, Down here he comes to, to he, he, he experiences a famine. God allows a famine to come in the land. You're on about the 13th, uh, 10th verse. This is chapter 12, verse 10. He says, and there was a famine in the land. And Abraham went, this is Genesis, chapter 12, verse 11. Verse 10. And there was a famine in the land, and Abraham went down into Egypt to sojourn there, for the famine was grievous in the land. This is the guy with the promise. He's the guy that's heard from God, but here he is. He's having doubts in his flesh because now there's a what? There's a famine. You will run into things that's going to be, that, that you will blame the devil for, but God has allowed it. Somebody say amen. Amen. Quit giving the devil credit. If he can do anything he wants to do, then that makes him God. He ain't God. And it came to pass when he was come near to enter into Egypt that he, he told Sarah, he told Sarah, say lie to lie or tell a part lie. Just say that you're my sister. Somebody say amen. He said, and it came to pass in verse 11, he was come near to enter into Egypt that he said unto Sarai, his wife, Behold, now I know that thou art a fair woman to look upon. Therefore, it shall come to pass when the Egyptians shall see thee, that they shall say, This is his wife, and they shall kill me. But they will save thee alive. Say, I pray thee. He should be praying to God, not her. Say, I pray thee, thou art my sister that it may be well with me for thy sake, and my soul shall live because of thee. He's concerned with himself. Anytime you get over-concerned with I, amen, God's got us here to minister. He's got us here to minister to people. Anytime you get so concerned with I, you are not going to be able to hear God. Amen. You are not going to be able to hear God in that situation. So Abraham goes through this thing. He goes fear, falsehood, failure, 
but God is faithful. God still blesses him. So he goes over into Egypt now. And over in Egypt, he's, he's literally living a lie. He's watching his wife interact with Pharaoh and him. And he didn't even have the courage to stand up and say to Pharaoh that this is my wife. I don't know what all Sarah was going through. Amen. But God intervened. Even when, we said this last week, even when you are wrong, God is still for you. Now, did you hear me? God is still for you. Amen. And he's going to work that situation out. It's going to cost you, but he's going to work it out. Somebody say amen. I, I need you to know that because where we're going today with this is understanding repentance. Understanding what repentance, praise God. You, you can't come to God, you can't come to God believing he's mad at you, or he don't like you, or he's condemning you. God has fixed that in Christ, somebody say amen, sins are paid for, praise God. He is for you, but he cannot make you. He's training you, amen, to learn that God is a loving God. I don't care where you fall to. I don't care where you at. You know, the whole house, the crack house, the pot house, it, it don't matter. Get up. Somebody said, but then you have to come in faith. Faith is not believing God is mad at you. Did you hear me? Faith is not what? Believing God is mad. Therefore, now there's no condemnation. We said that last week. There's no condemnation. So you can't come to God condemning yourself. You coming on the grace and the mercy and the merit of Jesus Christ. That's faith in Christ. Not faith in your effort or your work. If you come condemning yourself, you're basically saying, what I've done is greater than God. There is nothing greater than God. Somebody say amen. amen. So you always got to come to God with faith in Christ. Right. What's faith in Christ? He paid it all. Yes. Amen. He what? Paid it all. His blood is more powerful than any trouble you can get into. Right. All you need to do is what Brother Aaron said. He said, he said if my people he didn't say, now, if they done this, it won't work. He didn't say, if they done this, it won't work. He said, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves, turn from their wicked ways. Amen. He said, he'll do what? This land. Somebody say, amen. I'm, I'm trying to tell you, sometimes we think we're coming to God in faith in Christ. Remember, it's faith in Christ that God is looking for. That's the standard that he set up. We come in faith of the work, the finished work. Everybody say, finish. Jesus said it's finished. We come in faith of the finished work. If there's any sin that hadn't been paid for, it's unfinished. Woo-wee. We can camp out there. If there's any sin that hadn't already been paid for, then it's not finished. Jesus said, it's finished. Don't shoot me, I'm just a messenger. He said, it's what? Finished. So repentance, amen, it's changing your mind or changing your mind. It's not so much your position as it is. It starts in your mind. Changing your mind about what? Nothing's too hard for God. Changing your mind about what? See, this is faith in Christ. Nothing's too hard for God. I can go to my father. My father has already paid for me to be able to go to him. I don't care what I fell into. Amen. Somebody say amen. So I turn in, in faith in Christ and I thank God, amen, for his already paid for forgiveness. Amen. I can't, I, I'm, I'm not telling you 
there are some that would say, well, Jesus already paid for why we need to repent. You need to repent to acknowledge the work of Christ because, because when he went to Egypt, he was saying Egypt is able to pro provide better than God. Do you hear that? It's a famine in the land. What did he do? Oh, Lord, he didn't. He went to Egypt, which caused him to lie. So he was saying that Egypt and their supply was greater than the God that he served. That's what he had to change his mind about. When you turn to anything other than God, you're saying that thing is a greater God to me than this God that's brought you out, that saved you, that paid for you, your sins on the cross, this God that healed you, this God that delivered you, this God that has done it and got a track record in your life, he's faithful. And not only is he faithful, he's able. Anything you turn to other than him, you're saying that's God. That's idolatry. Even when you put yourself above your self and your comfort above God, you, that's idolatry. Amen. And you shall have no other, God. no other, God. no other God. before him. Amen. So your repentance is back to God. Somebody say amen. amen. But you can't come to him Condemning you. You're, not, you, you, you. you're not coming based on your works anyway. You're coming based on the finished work of Christ. And he has, he has completely paid for all sin. If he hadn't, he would have to come and die every time somebody sinned to save. So my thanks is for a finished work. Somebody say amen. amen. He saw what you was going to get into a long time. That's why Jesus went to the cross. When Jesus said, is it any other way? He's letting us know there. Amen. There is no other way. If it's possible, Father, let this cup. If we can save them any other kind of way. Let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, thy will be done. So he continued this process toward the cross. The word says that he got up, he had been ministered to, and he got, he said, it's, it's, we can go on now. The issue's settled. It's, it, the most comfortable place you can be in is the place of indecision. Where you, you think there's another way. What am I trying to say? There? Is that a, there's a, it's the a, a halt between two points. Somebody say amen. You're, you're, you're stuck between you. Uh, it, do I have to do this? You thinking, do I have to do this? You can't dunk a ball thinking, can I do it? Them people you see dunking done done it and done it and they're positive that they can do it. You understand what I'm saying? God's going to rehearse you enough in your salvation until you know what God will do. Yes. Amen. 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 He said, they that know their God yes. shall do exploits. You'll know him as he's the one with the wind. He's the wind under your, under your wings. He's, it's not your ability. It's God's ability that you're resting on. You don't move like the eagle. You don't come off the rock until you know it's the wind of the Holy Ghost that's blowing you. Until you know it's the voice of God that's, that's telling you. Until you know that it's the word of God is in agreement with it. Until you know and you have that confirmation of the Holy Ghost on the inside of you. And when you move, you know it's God. I don't care what they say. I don't care how they say. I can be two, it can be 10,000. He said, though 10,000 fall at your side, it will not come nigh thee. Somebody say amen. 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 So you are being trained 
Abraham was being trained. Abraham was being trained to make a final deposit. It wasn't so much about all of these here. Abraham was being trained to trust God for that which God knew he wasn't ready for yet. You're being trained. And so I'm, why are you telling me this, Pastor? So you can praise God in the midst of the training. No one praise God, amen, that he's, he's taking you somewhere. It, it, it says that he, you are his, his, his workmanship or his craftsmanship. God is making you. And when you make that deposit, you're going to know it. That thing that seemed too hard, you're going to be able to say, is anything too hard for God? You're going to be able to answer that question. Everybody going to say, that's too big. That's too far. You can't do it. Ain't no help now. You ain't going to make it. But you have got a witness on the inside of you that is saying, go! Run! Jump! Do what God is telling you to do. Somebody say amen. amen. Anybody know that witness on the inside of you? Somebody say praise God. Praise God. Amen. And it's, it is only, it is, it is, it, 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 it is only, uh, the, the crucialness is you understanding and discerning that voice in that time. Somebody say amen. amen. So Abraham, Ab Abram, Comes, he, he, he recovers from that. How can I say that? He recovers from that situation in Egypt. And now he comes out of that situation better than what he went in. Somebody say amen. amen. Now I'm talking about in the physical, but also in the spiritual. There's a physical thing that's going on there. Yeah, he got blessed with, with sheep and all of those things, the material things. But he also got blessed in his knowing. Because when he goes, when he comes here now, he knows a different uh, portion of God. Somebody say amen. 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 Uh, chapter 13. I believe I want to go there. Let's see. Well, look at, look at chapter 12, verse 17. It says, And the Lord plagued Pharaoh and his house with the great plagues, because of Sarah, Abraham's wife. And Pharaoh called Abraham and said, What is it this that thou hast done unto me? Why didst thou not tell me that she was thy wife? Why saidest thou she is my sister? So I might have taken her to me to wife. Now therefore, behold, thy wife, take her and go thy way. And, and Pharaoh commanded his men concerning him, and they sent them away and his wife and all he had. Amen. Drop down to 13. Know this in the Bible. There are no divisions of chapters. We put them there. We put these divisions of chapters here. It rolls right on down into this. And Abraham went up out of Egypt, he and his wife and all he had, and lot with him into the south. And Abraham was very rich in cattle, in silver, and in gold. Look like every time Abraham make a mess up, he's getting richer. <laughs> and he went on his journey from the south even to Bethel unto the place where his tent had been at the beginning between Bethel and Ai. We said Bethel meant the house of God and Ai meant place of ruin between the two. He goes back there. And unto the, place of, uh, unto the place of the altar which he had made there at the first. And there Abraham called on the name of the Lord. Somebody said praise God. Amen. Amen. He begins to call on the name of the Lord. He went where? Back. Somebody said he went back. He went back, he went back to the place, praise God. He went back to God. Amen. He went back to God. He changed his mind. He left Egypt. Somebody said praise the Lord. And he went back to where he knew he heard from God. When you don't hear nothing from God, keep doing the same thing he last told you. Until you hear further instructions, keep doing the last instructions you had from God. Keep doing that. Abraham went back to prayer. 
he went back to calling on the name of the Lord. Somebody say amen. 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 He didn't wait in a new place. He went back to what he knew was working. If it's working, don't stop. Amen. Ain't no need to try nothing new if it's working. Somebody said, praise the Lord. Repentance. Amen. Can you pull me up? Matthew uh, 3, 2. Let's try that. Repentance. To, to, to change your mind. To change your mind. To turn your mind. God is bringing us to repentance because we've fallen in Adam. We've what? All recovering from a fall. Everybody, he, what did he say to confirm that? He said, all have sinned. Amen. And then David said another way. He said, I was born and shaped. So we all start from the sin point. Amen. Repentance means return back to the top. Return back to that relationship with God. Return back to that what? Relationship of sonship with God. That's where Adam fell from. Somebody say amen. amen. And saying repent. John is saying, what? Repent ye for the kingdom of God of heaven is at hand. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent ye for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. This is a whole different way of thinking. When it talks about repentance, it's starting in your mind. Most people try to try to stop what they're doing. First, you got to change your mind about what you're doing. Amen. You got to do what? Change your mind about what you're doing. Anything that God hadn't told you to do, anything that's taking you away from God is a lie and it's sin. See, we put sin drinking, fornicating, and we see the drunk, and we say, oh, you in sin. We see the, we see the, 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 the whoremonger, and we say, oh, you in sin. We see the drug addict. The obvious things that you can see, that's a whole lot more merciful than this stuff you can't see. Backbiting, envy, jealousy against your brothers and sisters, you smile right on. Hey, girl. Hey, girl, how you doing? Be hating every minute of. <laughs> Amen. He told, he told, the, Jesus told the guy, I said, hey, if you, if you look on a woman, if you, if, you, if, you, if you have the thought in your mind, he said, you have already committed this sin. So sin starts where? In your mind. Amen. Because when you jump, when you, when you think on or meditate on, you're worshiping it. Amen. Worship starts in the mind. It's wherever you're thinking about it. That's why God said, let this mind be in you. It's a mind of sonship. You're calling him father. Let this mind, what mind is that? The mind of Christ. And when we say that, we don't understand what Christ is showing. Christ was a son. Jesus was a son. So it's the mind of a son. What does a son do? He obey his father. And Jesus demonstrates that. He said, I, I didn't come to do my own will. I come to do the will of my father. Yes, now you check off with God and then it's God's responsibility to let you know. Amen. Did you hear me? Amen. Lord, what would you have me to do today? Lord, is this of you? Lord, should I be here? Amen. Then it's God's responsibility. But if you don't never check off with God and you're just doing what you want to do, you put yourself on the throne. That's an idol. You're worshiping you. Amen. So in, 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 in what things am I to check off on? Everything. There's nothing too little and there's definitely not nothing too big. That's what a son would do. Father, should I do this? Father, is this? Father, should I be? It's getting that critical. The darkness is that critical at this point. We're fixing to get to where it's so dark, praise God, amen. And God wants to shine you off his light that you can't even go by what you used to think was good and bad. He told Adam, said, don't eat from the tree of the knowledge of good or evil. Let me tell you. He, 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 that's what he told him. He said, don't eat from the tree of knowledge. I used to always ask, why come you don't want him to know good or evil? Because we begin to say 
certain things are good and evil when actually it's a mindset. Amen. And in your religion, if he told you to go down to the fuzzy duck and sit down at the table, you'd be saying, I rebuke you, Satan. And you're supposed to know his voice. And understand that he ain't going to let just anybody handle you. And then you're questioning people that you see in different places, in different situations, and you're not even discerning by the spirit. You're just saying because of where they are and because of what you see them involved in, that that's not a God and that they not of God. That's a lie. Yeah. Know them by their spirit. Yeah. Know them by the spirit of God. It's the only one that knows the heart of a man. So the spirit of God will let you know whether this is right or wrong. Somebody, but if you jump into conclusions, you're saying you're God. Because nobody can come under judgments from anybody but God. Amen. It's, going, it's getting that critical. And you hurt people. We hurt people. We hurt people. We hurt people because we don't know where they are. You know, here this guy sitting here drinking a beer. And you, you be going like, oh, you going to hell. You should, I thought you said, oh, you had to stop that. You don't know the guy just quit drinking. Phil. Somebody say amen. amen. And he's, he's progressing. He's, he's walking with God. And God is doing what he's doing. In him, but now you come and, and, and act like God. Amen. But the Spirit of God knows. He knows exactly what you ought to say to that person. You'll wind up there encouraging them when your own soul will have been saying, you need to let him know. And God will have encouragement words coming out of your mouth, and then you'll be going like, what am I doing? You'll shake yourself, and then you'll start cutting into them because that's your religion. It's not your relationship. Amen. Amen. That's where we are. That's where we are now. That's where we are Re with repentance. Lord, I, want, I, I don't want to do nothing that you didn't tell me to do. You have charge of my day, my time, my money, my every. Don't nothing belong to me. It all belongs to you. I'm a steward. I'm a steward. I'm a steward of my time. I'm a steward of this life. I'm a steward of my money. I'm a steward of my relationships. These people belong to you. Amen. Amen. So I can't just say what I want to hear people say all the time. I'm just being real. I'm just being real. Amen. I don't want you to be real. I want you to be in faith. I want you to be listening to God when you tell me something, when you share something with me. Amen. It's, it's critical. It's that dark outside. And the battle is it raging. It's raging. What we said, how did that song go? The, uh, as a storm coming. It's on the ocean and it's what? It's moving this way. If you think that thing just going to stay over in Israel, you just don't know. If you think it's just going to stay over in Ukraine, you just don't know. And we better plant as much seed as we can in the position God's got us in, praise God, amen, so that we, we'll be ready to stand when the storm hit here. Because God's not a respectful person. It's, it's dark everywhere. Somebody say Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, Mark 1.15. The kingdom of God, a new way of thinking is, is here, praise God. It says repent. We got to enter into this kingdom, this way of thinking. Amen. Mark 1.15. And saying the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is. And, what is it? What you? and saying the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. What is the gospel? What is the gospel? What's good news? Jesus has paid for our sins. Somebody say amen. 
we can now go to the Father for ourselves. I don't need a priest. I can go to the Father for myself. I don't need a certain place. I don't need to be in Jerusalem. I don't need to be at this, at this guy's church or that person. I don't need to be with this person. I can come right where I am. I can call on him. And he'll hasten. He, I said, what? He'll hasten to my cry. Somebody say amen. That's good news. That's good news. And nothing will stand in the way. Somebody say amen. Amen. When Jesus was crucified, the veil was rent. Somebody said the veil was rent. The veil of the temple, the veil of religion, the veil of, of, of this religiosity that you got to go through this hoop and jump through that hoop and jump through that hoop. All that was taken out of the way. All I got to do is say, Jesus! <laughs> the woman that, that was, had the issue of blood, she just says, Jesus! Now, son of David. Somebody said, Hallelujah. Amen. What did she mean, son of David? That means you are, you are the Messiah that we've been believing, sir. You are the Messiah. You're not just a prophet. You're just not a good man. You're not just a powerful man. But you are the Messiah. Yeah. Amen. And Jesus didn't even have time to say nothing. She just touched him in virtue. Somebody say amen. amen. And virtue just flowed into her. And Jesus had to turn around and say, hi. Virtue just went from, virtue means power. Power just, you, you understand what I'm saying? The Lord is present in this room. The person of faith can exact power at any time. He ain't got to wait on me to grow, lay no hands on you or hit you with some oil or something like that. It is your faith. It is your faith that makes you whole. It is your faith that makes you whole. I believe on the on, on Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, the Messiah has already come. Bled, died, went to hell, paid for my sin. He is coming back, and right now, through the Spirit of the living God, is living on the inside of me. And I have access. You got to drive all the way to your doctor. All I got to do is just say, Jesus. You got to make an appointment. All I got to do is say, Jesus, my son's in trouble. My daughter's in trouble. Jesus, I can't reach them. But Lord, I know you're right there where they are. Somebody say hallelujah. 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 Worthy is the Lamb of God. He's a perfect sacrifice. That lamb was the sacrifice. He was the lamb of God on the cross, made the sacrifice for me and you. He paid for it in full, and now we have access. We got access, praise God. It does not yet appear what you shall be, but when he appears, you're going to be just like him. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, hallelujah. He said, it's finished. It's finished. And say he rose, he defeated hell, death, and the grave. Even the grave can't hold what's inside of me. Somebody say, hallelujah. He said, love is stronger than death. Somebody said, praise the Lord. The grave couldn't even hold him. Your situation can't even hold you. All you got to do is call on the name. Gives you access. Somebody say hallelujah. Ain't no trouble too big, too great. And, and what you've been through, quit hating your experience. See, cause what you're saying is the devil did this and he can just do anything he want to do. What you ought to say is, Lord, I don't know why you let me go through this and why. Uh, uh, but I do understand it was for my good and you're developing this ministry in me. Lord, I, I, I'm all for it. Some, somebody said, so I praise your name. I praise your name. Because I'm your child and you don't let just anybody handle me. It's been you. He was ordering Abraham's faith. Even when Abraham went to Egypt, it was a little bit more stuff he had to get off Abraham. Because he knew what he was preparing for. God knew. It wasn't even up to Pharaoh. 
Abraham wasn't even trying to pray or anything. Abraham was over there. God told Pharaoh, you better leave him alone. Yeah, you better leave him alone. You're in trouble. You're touching this man's wife. Abraham, did, Ab Abraham didn't even have the courage to say that. He was scared for his own life. Amen. We would have called him coward and everything else. I wonder what you're afraid of. Yeah, you're all right when you're looking at somebody else's fear, but what about your fear? Somebody say amen. Amen. You're afraid of that next step. You're afraid of that next situation, praise God, that's coming up. Amen. Some of us, some of us are afraid of our children. And you know, when I say that, you're afraid to stand up and say what you need to say. Some of us are so indoctrinated with fussing and cussing and beating until when God says, say, I love you and I forgive you, you ain't got courage to say that. You can fuss, cuss, and beat, but you can't say I love you. It takes a lot of courage to say, I love you. It takes a lot of courage to say, forgive me. Daddy was wrong. I was putting the turkey in that pan because that's what I saw Grandmama do. That's all I knew to do. I didn't know it was okay to put it in a bigger pan. Amen. That's when you don't want to let these preconceived ideas be in your head. Let God teach you. He's going to teach you a whole nother way. And you can't even look to another person. You can look and see, you can look and see their assignment and how they go through that assignment, but you can't look and mark them. Amen. God's going to teach you all by himself. He said, the word of God said, you shall be taught of the Lord. <laughs> in a private class. He's going to teach you. Amen. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Thank you, Jesus. Unto the place of the altar which he had made there at, this is verse 4 of chapter 13 of Genesis. Unto the place of the altar which he had made there at the first, there uh, Abraham called on the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. And then he runs into this situation with, 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 uh, with Lot after that. See, God, God never told him to take nobody with him, but he ends up with Lot. Amen. So he runs into trouble with Lot. God allows the trouble to happen between him and Lot so God can kind of separate him from that. You understand what I'm saying? So here he goes and says, and the land was not able to bear them. Verse, verse, verse 5 of, of chapter 13 says, And Lot also, which went with Abraham. So Abraham now is repented. Remember now, this man that had gone over to uh, Egypt with his wife and sold his wife, pimped his wife, is repented now. He's a different person. He's a, well, that's what it is. You know, he, it was for his benefit. He, he going to stay alive and he got some more sheep and stuff. He said, unto the place where his tent had been, he says, and Abraham went up out, where am I? Chapter 13, verse what? Five, okay. And Lot also, which went with Abraham, had flocks and herds and tents, and the land was not able to bear them that they might dwell together. They're so rich. Sometimes, just being around the right people. Amen. Now, this was Abraham richness, but Lot was, was benefiting by association. <laughs> so you can benefit the other way, too. <laughs> you can benefit bad, you can benefit good. You didn't know who you're hanging around. <laughs> Somebody say amen. But their substance was great. So that they could not dwell together. And there was a strife between the herdmen of Abraham and the herdmen of Lot's cattle. And the Canaanite and the Pezzarites dwelt then in the land. 
And Abraham, Abram said unto Lot, Let there be no strife, I pray thee, between me and thee, and between my herdmen and thy herdmen, for we be brethren. Is not the whole land before thee? Separate thyself, I pray thee, from me. If thou wilt take the, the left hand, then I'll go to the right. Or if thou depart to the right hand, then I will go to the left. Abraham not even looking to see what would be the most beneficial. Somebody say amen. Because his trust ain't in the land. His trust in God. Lot think he finna get over. Yeah, he do. And Lot lifted up his eyes and beheld all the plain of the Jordan that it was well watered. Woo! Everywhere. Before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, even as the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt, as, the, as thou comest unto Zohar. So he's saying this thing is so, so, uh, so blessed that, uh, uh, where Lot is looking until it's, it's, it's comparable to Eden. It's comparable, comparable to, to, to God's land. And he says, Then Lot chose him all the plain of Jordan, and Lot journeyed east, they separated themselves, the one from the other. Abraham dwelled in the land of Canaan. Lot dwelled in the cities of the plain and pitched his tent toward Sodom. But the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. And the Lord said unto Abraham, after Abram, after that Lot was separated, the Lord said unto Abram, after that Lot was separate, after Lot was separate, after Lot was separate, God begins to talk to Abraham. There are some things that couldn't be said to Abram as long as he was in the company of Lot. Maybe, maybe, maybe we're not hearing because of our company. I have to listen to my wife because she she pulled my coattail. Tell me, all right, all right. I know, I know. We, we had it there. We fixed the beast too. <laughs> Amen. And Abraham dwelled in the land of Canaan, and Lot dwelled in the cities of the plain and pitched his tent toward Sodom. But the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord. Achievement. And the Lord said unto Abram, after that Lot was separated from him, lift up now thine eyes and look from the place where thou art northward and southward and eastward and westward for all the land which thou seest. To thee will I give it, and to thy seed forever. This is why they're fighting now. They're trying to tell uh, Jerusalem to accept giving away part of the land. They can't. They can't. And it looked like Jerusalem is causing the whole world havoc because all they got to do is just make a peaceful settlement which will include giving away some of the land. The land was given to them by God. And this, this strife that's stirring up now all over the world, this is a God thing. This is a God thing. The darkness you're about to see, it's a God allowing this darkness to take place. Somebody say amen. And it's going to get dark all over. And it's going to affect our supply and our energy and our gas and our food. Price is going to be affected. But God is always taking care of his people. Even when he took them over in Egypt, praise God, he, he gave them, he put them in Goshen. God is always taking care of his people. Don't do like Abraham and panic and run to wherever they say they're feeding at. If it compromises the character of God, you don't want to be there. Somebody say amen. In other words, stay with God. Because right now, the, 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 right now, it's going to look like Israel's wrong. Why don't they just make peace? You don't know the cost of this peace. Amen. I can get a little peace by drinking. It's just temporary, though. I can snort a little coat, get a little peace. Amen. I, I, can, I can be mad at Sister Simmons, go to another woman. Temporary. 
about as long as it takes for her to find out, wouldn't it be better? <laughs> Somebody said, praise the Lord. The <laughs> Lord has taught me better than that. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But what I'm saying is, we live in a temporary, uh, everything happened on this earth is temporary. Don't settle for temporary and blow eternal. Amen. If, 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 you, if, if you don't have nothing of the world's glitter and glam and gold, and then you get to be with God at the end, you have won, somebody say. And God will show you off. I'm, I'm talking about he will show you off. He will show you rejecting the world. He'll show you telling your, 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 your peers, no, I can't go there. He'll show you saying, no, I can't do that. Or, no, I don't do that. It's, oh, man, come on. Ain't nobody going to know. You know, that he'll show you off saying that. So they'll we be, they will have what? A witness. And say, ain't nobody going to get to God and say, I didn't know. No, you remember when you was with Aaron and Aaron went over there and told you he couldn't go and he told you about God and you went on anyway? That was your witness. You, you might not have known me, but you should have followed Aaron. <laughs> Amen, you should have followed. God will give you a witness. He'll give you a way out. Praise the Lord. Amen. So don't, don't, don't. Remember everything on the world, even your body. Even the pain of your body, the hurt. I heard a guy said the other day, he said, man, I'm in pain. He said, they gave me some pain pills. He said, but Brother Simmons, I don't take them pain pills because I'll get used to them. And I said, well, you're you, you going to hurt. He said, well, I'd just rather hurt than to be hooked on them drugs. Somebody say amen. 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 What was that? A witness. Yeah. I'd rather do it God's way than this way. You, you see what I'm saying? Especially for us former drug addicts and stuff like that. Praise God. Our bodies can't take a, a little bit of that. Because a little bit of that opened up appetites to the old situation. So sometimes we suffer some things to stay out of that bondage. We didn't learn. Did you hear what I said? We have learned. I don't want, I'll hurt before I go back where I was. Somebody, I didn't know God, and I didn't know him in the free part of my sin. I'll hurt before I, it's only for a short time. Somebody say amen. If it's a hundred years, that's just a short time. Somebody say amen, because I'm going to have eternity with God. Somebody say praise the Lord. Amen, 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 amen. So Abraham dwelt in the land a lot. And, and the Lord said unto Abraham, after that lot was separated from him, lift up now your eyes and look from the place where you, you are, northward, southward, eastward. Verse 15 said, for all the land which thou seest, to thee will I give it, and thy seed forever. Somebody said what? Forever. That's what Israel standing on. That forever word right there. And it says, and I will make thy seed as the dust of the earth, so that if, I, if a man can number the dust of the earth, then shall I see it also be numbered. Arise, walk through the land in the length of it and in the breadth of it, for I will give it unto thee. Then Abraham removed his tent and came and dwelt in the plain of Mamre, which is in Hebron, and built there an altar. Somebody say amen. Amen. This is the altar of peace. Abraham has come to the point to where he, ain't, he, he knows God, He's going he's gonna to walk with God, praise God, amen. He's settled the issue, and now he has peace. Somebody said peace through repentance. After repentance comes, after repentance comes, sometimes we're trying to get peace without no repentance. Ain't going to happen. You're going to have to, we, we're going to have to acknowledge in our mind, in our soul that I was wrong. I was wrong. I'm sorry. I was wrong. Somebody say amen. 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 I don't know what you're dealing with, but we're trying to get free from it without repentance. But repentance is you saying, I am wrong. God, you are 
right. He remember he went back to Bethel and Ai. Between there, he pitched the tent. He began to call on Lord again. He was turning away from Egypt where he had gone, looking for help from them. Now he's coming back to God. He's saying, I am wrong. After that comes what? Peace. Anybody need peace? Right now, what I need the Spirit of God to do is just begin to search you. Say, Lord, search my heart. Come on. Come on. We do. We'll go to the next one next week but stand up amen just stand up amen this is this is uh where's my uh communion thank you jesus right here just ask the lord to search your heart show me me yeah show me where i'm in denial yeah Amen. Show me the idol of myself and my own comfort. Amen. Lord, I'm sorry. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I'm repenting. Changing my mind. You are Lord. Not me. Or not any other situation. But you are Lord. And I turn to you. Amen. I'm sorry for my, in my past where I've turned to other things and other people. Thank you, Jesus. But now, Lord, I just turn to you. And I sit and I listen to you. And I wait on you. Your word says, they that wait upon the Lord. They shall renew. Oh, I'm looking for some renewing, some refreshing right now in the name of Jesus. I'm looking for some renewing of strength right now. Those of us that have been tired, we've been trying to be God. We've been trying to do everything. But Lord, we don't have to worry. That what you have for us is for us. I don't have to worry about losing it. I don't have to worry about nobody taking it. Lord. All I have to do is keep my mind stayed on you. And you will keep me in perfect peace. Peace be still. I'm speaking to every storm in your life right now. Every situation in your life that's trying to trouble you right now. I'm acknowledging that God's hands are upon it. In the name of Jesus. And you're working it out, the will and the do of your good pleasure. And whatever you do is good for me. It's good for me. I, I, I take my hands off of it and I put my mind on you. In the name of Jesus. I'm going I'm I'm to quit trying to manipulate it. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I repent of witchcraft. Come on. I repent of witchcraft. That's where you're trying to control your situation. I only come to do what the, what the Father has told me to do. I only come to do the will of the Father. I repent of trying to control and manipulate the situation. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I surrender to you. This is the time of my refreshing. This is the time of my peace. This is the time of my joy. I shall be still and know that you are Lord. You, you alone are God. Say in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name.